Welcome to Savage Kitchen. Today, we are going to be making homemade chocolate liqueur. Now, I love chocolate liqueur. It is a decadent treat to enjoy on its own, either chilled or over ice. It's also wonderful in something like a chocolate martini. It's great drizzled over ice cream. So many ideas for chocolate liqueur. Now, the reason I wanted to do this video in particular is because I actually was devastated to learn that my favorite chocolate liqueur, which was the Godiva chocolate liqueur, has been discontinued. I went online uh, the other night to go buy a bottle of this just to see if it was in stock at Total Wine and fell down the rabbit hole learning that they don't make this anymore, which is just like wildly disappointing. So. We are going to be making two versions of a chocolate liqueur today. We're going to do milk chocolate and we are going to do dark chocolate. The milk chocolate is going to have dairy in it. The dark chocolate is actually dairy free. Now Godiva actually had two more flavors. They did a white chocolate liqueur and a caramel liqueur. I have to say the white chocolate liqueur, I'm not a huge white chocolate person. It was delicious. Um, I might try and work on a recipe to recreate that. It was just really, really good. So another thing to note is that there are a lot of different things on the market that are labeled chocolate liqueur. And some of those things are labeled creme de cacao or creme de cocoa. I'm honestly not sure which pronunciation is correct. So you'll probably hear me mix them up. So there's no regulation on the term creme de cocoa or creme de cacao. The difference most often is that a creme de cacao is not a cream liqueur. It is usually a distilled spirit and it's something that you would mix in a cocktail versus something that you might drink on its own. For our purposes today, I'm going to, as always, put chapter markers below. Also, I'm doing measurements in US standard measurements. I will put conversions for milliliters below and you can always use the Googles uh, to convert to whatever your standard of measurement is. Just know that when I'm speaking, I'm using US standard measurements. Let's get into what we're gonna need. So even though we are doing two versions of a liqueur today, most of our ingredients are the same. The only thing we're doing is changing the ratios a little bit for our milk chocolate liqueur, and there's gonna be the introduction of some dairy. But we're gonna be making a chocolate syrup for both, and we're gonna be using the same base spirit for both. So ingredients that you're going to need for our chocolate syrup are sugar. I like to use this uh, raw organic cane sugar. It's just a little bit less processed. It's uh, similar to like a turbinado sugar. If you don't have this, I would just use plain white granulated sugar. Next up is ground cocoa powder. Now you will absolutely taste the cocoa powder in this liqueur. So use a cocoa powder that you like. I personally love Ghirardelli. This um, has a very different taste than for example, Hershey's has. It's to me more chocolatey which <laughs> I know it shouldn't really use a word to describe the thing you're trying to describe. <laughs> if you enjoy Hershey's, use Hershey's, use whatever you have, but know that the quality of your liqueur is definitely going to be affected by the quality of all of your ingredients. So use things that you like and that you enjoy. Also pro tip, uh, try using black cocoa. I personally love using black cocoa. It is a Dutch processed cocoa, which means it is alkalized and less acidic. And it's dark, hold on, let's show, shall we? So black cocoa really is, it's like hearts of darkness up in here. When you look at the difference between these two cocos, it's pretty stark, the black cocoa versus the ground cocoa. Flavor difference is there too. This is a little bit more, I would say intensely chocolate. It's slightly more bitter. It's reminiscent of an Oreo. So the dark, dark cookie of an Oreo, that's black cocoa. So if you really like that intensely chocolatey flavor, that's a little bit bitter, maybe try using black cocoa instead of our regular cocoa or do a blend of the two, which is my preference. Like when I'm baking and making a cake, I use a blend of both. All right, additional ingredients for our syrup. We're gonna want a little bit of vanilla extract. Then we're gonna add a little bit of espresso powder. And then finally, just a pinch of salt. Oh, and water, hot water, because we're gonna be making a syrup. Now, moving on to our milk chocolate version, all of the same things, we're gonna make the syrup the same, but when we get to mixing everything together, we're going to be introducing sweetened condensed milk and cream. Now, in this, I'm using half and half, which uh, is, I've learned, a uniquely American term. Half and half is a cream that uh, is 
akin to, if you're in the UK, a single cream, I believe. You can also use heavy cream in this recipe. You could use milk if you would like. Just know that the, the thickness of your cream is going to affect the thickness of the final result. And then finally, the thing that turns this into a liqueur, liquor. So I've done this quite a few different ways at this point, and my personal favorite for this is actually a brandy. Now you can do this with vodka, that's gonna be a neutral spirit and will affect the overall flavor the least. It'll probably taste the most chocolatey. I've done this with bourbon because y'all know I love bourbon. It's delicious. Uh, much like my coffee liqueur though, it is distinctly a bourbon liqueur. You can taste the bourbon in it. With the brandy, I don't know that you necessarily identify brandy, but it adds different flavor and dimension to the final product. And I think that it comes closest to being the copycat for whatever Godiva used in theirs. Okay, let's talk about the tools that you're going to need. As always, bottle. We always wanna have the end in mind, right? So have a container ready for your finished liqueur. Then heavy bottom saucepan, because we're going to be making a syrup. And then for our milk chocolate version, we're gonna need a blender. Very similar to my Irish cream video, we're gonna be blending up some sweetened condensed milk and you really need the blades to get everything blended together and living in harmony. Step one with making the syrup, we're gonna add our water to the pan. By letting this heat up, it's gonna help these ingredients melt into it a little bit quicker. Now with sugar and cocoa powder, if you've ever tried to make a syrup with cocoa powder, you know that it likes to clump together. Like remember as a kid drinking Ovaltine and the little like bombs that would go off in your face? That's what's gonna happen here unless you blend together the sugar and the cocoa powder first. And like, it doesn't need to be perfect. Just make sure that they're incorporated and you see sugar crystals along with the cocoa. And then right to this mix, we're gonna add just like a half, not even a half, we're gonna add like a quarter teaspoon of espresso powder. Like you don't have to be that precise, it's okay. Also, the espresso powder is not gonna make this taste like coffee. It actually just helps intensify that chocolate flavor. Same thing with the salt, we're just doing a pinch of salt. And people are always like, what is a pinch? Literally a pinch. It's probably equivalent to an eighth of a teaspoon, maybe less of salt. But again, what that does is just kind of opens up all of those flavors. So we've got our water to a boil. We're gonna add in our dry ingredients, making a mess. Just make sure everything is melted and incorporated. And once that is, we're gonna add in just a dash of vanilla. Again, like half a teaspoon. Woo, that was probably a whole teaspoon. It's fine, they're life partners. So it was a cup and a quarter of water, cup and a quarter of sugar, and then three quarters of a cup of cocoa powder. A pinch of salt, a pinch of espresso powder, and a dash of vanilla. All right, so you are going to bring this to a boil, stir, and then remove from the heat and let cool completely. Through the magic of television, uh, I already have a couple batches of syrup made. Now, this is also a great opportunity if you wanna add some special flavoring to your coffee liqueur, I would do it at the syrup stage. For example, if you wanted to add just a pinch of cayenne to this, ooh, yes, yes please. Uh, a little bit of almond extract or maybe cherry extract. You wanna do that in the syrup stage because that gives the, all of those flavors the opportunity to sort of marry and come together. And now we're just at the point where we're gonna be mixing our spirit with our syrup and we're good to go. So we're gonna start with our dark chocolate liqueur. I have my two cups of syrup and we're gonna be adding a bunch of brandy. We're gonna go right in here with our syrup mixture. Woo! I was totally dipping pretzels in this earlier, don't judge me. And then we are going to do equal parts brandy. By the way, this particular brandy that I'm using is new to me. I got this in the store because I had ran out of the one that I usually use. It's fantastic. This was a $14 bottle of brandy out of California. It's their XO. They also had other versions of this that were even less expensive, but $14 for a 750 ml bottle, and it's delicious. I could absolutely drink this on its own. It's wonderful. So into the bottle we go with our E&J brandy. 
All right, let's seal this up and give it a really good shake. We're gonna put this aside while we now work on our milk chocolate liqueur. Okay, so for this one, we're gonna be adding some sweetened condensed milk. If you wanna get a little crazy, you can try using a caramel sweetened condensed milk. A lot of these liqueurs have caramel flavoring and caramel color added. Personally, I this color is gonna be a little bit different and I'm okay with that because I feel like the flavor is the most accurate. However, if color is really important to you, I would try adding a touch of this. This also is going to change the flavor a little bit. It's gonna taste more caramelly, 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 whatever, um, which is delicious, just depends on what you prefer. If you've been with me for a while, I'm a big fan of like, do whatever you want. If you like the way that it tastes, perfect, enjoy, good for you. So we're gonna do the entire 14 ounces of sweetened condensed milk. Next up is our brandy. We're just gonna be doing a cup of brandy. So this version of our liqueur is a little less alcohol heavy. Oh, <laughs> all right, we might be just a, shy, a little bit shy. The problem is I was sipping it and enjoying it first. Don't tell anybody. All right, blender up. Nothing crazy, just not get those two ingredients talking to each other. Then we are going to add three quarters of a cup of our cream. And again, whatever type of cream you prefer. Heavy cream is gonna make this thicker, milk thinner. Totally up to you. And then we are going to be doing about half a cup of syrup, half a cup to three quarters of a cup. So we're just blending this for like 10 to 15 seconds. We don't wanna turn this into whipped cream. We also don't wanna get all the way to butter. That would be a problem. So just enough to make sure that everything is emulsified. And into the bottle. Hello, Valentine's Day. <laughs> Had I not run out of brandy, this would be at the same exact level as this. Mm. So now we have two chocolate liqueurs. There are a lot of different ways to arrive at these chocolate liqueurs and a lot of them require time and patience, two things that I never have enough of. So these are ready to drink right now. They will also improve over time. Like if you store this in a cool dark place for a day or two, it's going to get even better, but it's already delicious as is. The cream liqueur, same thing, but since this has dairy in it, store this in the refrigerator. Shelf life on either of these is quite long. This is gonna go faster. Again, it has dairy in it, but if you put this in the fridge, this is gonna be good for like six to eight weeks. Just like smell it. If it smells funky, don't drink it. Like use your head. But in general, this is gonna last a really long time. This one has all shelf stable ingredients in it. This is going to last even longer. The problem that you're gonna run into is that it's delicious and you're gonna drink it before it will ever have the opportunity to go bad. Now, I'm pretty excited about the dark chocolate liqueur. I personally, I love dark chocolate and I have so many different ways that I wanna use this. Ooh, okay, that might've been, that might've been a heavy pour, but we're not mad at it. Even though this does not have any cream in it, this is going to be thicker, but I promise you it's gonna taste so good. Woo. <laughs> Let's try our Godiva first. Mm, it smells so good. Mm, actually, smelling this, I almost think using a Kirsch might be good instead of the brandy, which Kirsch is a brandy, but... Oh my God. Oh, Godiva. Why? Why did you leave us? It is intensely chocolate. It's a little bit bitter. Very, very smooth. I also think that some of our other techniques to get to a chocolate liqueur as in an infusion using a very high proof spirit over cacao nibs will get us closer to the texture and mouthfeel of that. But let's try our homemade version. Oh. <laughs> That's joy. I feel like flavor wise, they are very, very similar. Texture is different, this is creamier. Mm. but the flavor is so good. Oh my God. Mm. I can't.
can't believe I have to record another video after this. Wow. Okay, before I get too excited about this, let's taste our milk chocolate versions. Again, very similar in color and texture to Bailey's. So you can see the color difference, but texture wise, it's identical. Okay, let's taste the Godiva. Mm. Mm. Good. My personal preference is the dark chocolate liqueur. So as much as I like this, I personally prefer this, but this is delicious. It is very reminiscent of Bailey's though. It just doesn't have quite the same kick that that Irish whiskey gives you. But it would be interesting to try this with an Irish whiskey. Oh, it smells good. Ooh. <laughs> I mean, I prefer the homemade version, I have to say, which is good since you can't get this anymore. So what I will tell you is that if you have not made plans for your special someone for Valentine's Day and you need something in a hurry, do this. Well, my friends, <laughs> I hope you have enjoyed this Godiva journey that we have been on. Again, I am really depressed that these are no longer available, even though there are a lot of other chocolate liqueurs on the market, but it's just as easy to make your own at home and then you can play with flavors and textures and find the combination that is perfect for you. And then you can have your own signature liqueur. So let me know in the comments if you try this. I love hearing from you guys. I am so grateful for all of you who watch. Uh, you've been blowing up the channel lately and I really appreciate it. Uh, if you want syrups or merch, head to the website, savagekitchen.com. There'll be all kinds of links below. Feel free to follow along on Instagram and I'll see you guys soon. Cheers, friends.